Uh, we're excited to speak today to Michael Burgess, the CEO of Justin. Thank you for joining, Michael. We really, really appreciate it. Delighted to be uh, on today. Thanks very much for inviting me, Anthony. It's our pleasure. I guess just before we start, uh, for people who are not as familiar with Justin's, uh, could you describe what the company is and what it does? I know it's been around for since 1869. Justin's has been around for over 100 years and is the leading provider of graduation gowns, diplomas, uh, and other graduation-related items in North America and also provides them internationally. We're also the largest provider of uh, class rings where students celebrate being part of a school and their class, and we're the largest distributor of yearbooks to students in North America as well. We also have the fun privilege of being the ring provider to many of the pro leagues and uh, the leading provider of those rings. And since, since the company has been around for so long, could you describe kind of the traditional sales model of the company? I remember kind of when I was dealing with them, there were, there were representatives in the school that were typically selling the rings and selling the yearbooks. So we have a couple of sales models. The primary sales model for our high school divisions are through independent reps who have relationships with the schools and sell in those schools, often through class presentations or meetings at lunchtime. And Justin's is a vertically integrated manufacturer and manufactures that custom unique ring or item for the student and it's then sent to the representative or directly to their home after the representative has taken the order historically in the school using paper order forms and catalogs and things like that. And you were brought into Justin given your kind of digital expertise and transformation expertise to perhaps, perhaps nudge the, I guess, company into the age of digital. Um, can you describe how you're thinking about that uh, across all your divisions? Sure. So uh, we actually have a pretty good percentage of our business already transacted through our e-commerce website, but a huge amount still remained in those personal interactions in the schools with those uh, traditional order forms. And the opportunity was really to think differently about the future of the industry, one that has is steeped in great tradition and has tremendous respect and, and pride in the schools and throughout the community, but that needed a transformation digitally. And so we've launched a number of initiatives, thinking digitally across the business to automate processes, have better data and information available for decision making in real time, uh, to be more predictive about where the company's going, but then also taking digital transformation into the experience for the student, parent, and school. For example, just now we are uh, launching digital signing for yearbooks, and that's in light of the current environment, which I'm sure we'll talk more about. And in the fall, we are launching what we call Yearbook Plus, which is where your phone interacts with the yearbook and reveals a lot more images and, and videos of the, the school year experience. So we're thinking pretty holistically about the whole enterprise and how to transform it digitally. So you've been doing this for, I think, about a year at Justin's. And um, of course, COVID-19 comes and not only disrupts how consumers react in general, but certainly disrupts school at the worst time of year, I'm assuming for your business. Tell us a little bit about how you had to react to the crisis. Justin's had never seen anything like all our schools shutting down for the rest of the school year, and obviously also colleges where we're, we have a big distribution as well. It was right at the peak of our graduation and new book delivery season, our ring delivery season. So it had a major impact on what we needed to do to be able to deliver in the season. So we immediately launched daily war rooms across sales, marketing, finance, HR, the plants, um, to be able to move much faster to make decisions in a very quick way. 
to do that from home because we were all sent to work from home a couple of weeks into this. We had to leverage uh, technologies at home for work from home, uh, so digital rapidly became part of that. But the response has been tremendous. Uh, we've had to flex uh, with plant closures and reopenings and site location shutdowns and reopenings to, to really be innovative in how we deliver the season. So, so as you talk about new ways of working and new ways of consumers interacting with digital, do you think consumers will, do you think this will last, I guess is the question. Do you think consumers will react and interact with digital and digital technology in a way that they haven't in the past because they've been forced to use this? Absolutely, no question. So let's start with the work environment. Uh, I am the only person in our corporate headquarters right now. Uh, everyone else is working from home. And what's remarkable is it's working really well. For the selling of our products, it had to be transformed. Obviously, we've seen a huge shift to e-commerce sales, and so that's been helpful. But in addition, we've had to come up with innovations on how we sell. So the ways that our sales representatives are doing drive-through uh, opportunities for the students to pick up an order and deliver their graduation gowns, their yearbooks, all of the innovations we've had to do at the delivery end, and then the digital marketing that we've required with emails, organic social media, uh, a lot of new digital influence in the selling process. And then the whole experience of a digital graduation, we've had to create those over the last eight weeks, and we've wow. now got thousands of our schools doing virtual commencement ceremonies, thousands of our schools having the ability for the kids to have their friends sign their yearbooks and take a PDF and print and then put all those signatures from their friends in the back of their yearbook. All of that has been created in the last 60 days. Amazing. That's an amazing story, Michael. You know, you and I have talked over the years about the importance of culture and you know, getting organizations to move quickly and to make decisions quickly. And you know, part of, I think, any challenge for a traditional-based company is culture to get the, the organization to move more quickly. It sounds like this crisis has somehow jump-started your culture into, by necessity, making decisions and moving much more quickly. Has, has that been the case? Absolutely has. I think when we, started the year, I had anticipated a need for a more consumer-centric, digitally-oriented, data-based uh, decision-making in a much more you know, dynamic culture, but this just super-turbocharged that whole thing where everyone was, oh gosh, we really have to respond, respond fast and be on top of things. And coming from retail, where it's a daily fast decision-making, particularly in e-commerce with a strong data orientation, uh, that, that was perfect for this crisis because it allowed us to really get the information, make decisions super fast based on what we could have, and, and then pivot and react really fast. And what's okay. extraordinary is also when you think about the extended ecosystem of Jostens with the sales reps, the plants, the schools, and the communities, everyone was co co coalescing quickly around needing to respond quickly to the crisis. And that allowed us to kind of move these digital types of initiatives and make changes much, much faster to your point, in the culture, and I think it's creating a new norm for how we operate and think culturally about the right way to, to run the company. You know, one of the challenges I could see moving forward, perhaps, is keeping this decision-making and, and fast-moving culture going when the crisis has abated. Have you and your management team thought about any ways you might be able to do that and make sure people don't become I'm not going to say complacent again, but perhaps fall, fall into their old ways. The way we uh, review information, communicate, 
think, act, decide, it's all being reset. And so I think that that's going to, a lot of that will stick. And I think with the leadership teams uh, joining me in, in reinforcing that culture, I think that we're going to stay with a lot of that culture. I think there will be a time soon where people are going to need to have some respite from the intensity yeah. of the crisis and get some rest and re-nourish and refresh. But the cultural shift, I think, is something that's here to stay. That's great. How about from an investment philosophy, Michael? I mean, you're owned by private equity. And, you know, as you're changing your, I guess, how you go to market, sometimes it's a hard balance between where companies make investments, certainly in technology. Have you accelerated your technology investment uh, as a result of this crisis? Have you rethought the way you're going to be deploying technology and, I guess, deploying the dollars spent on technology as, as digital has transformed? Yeah, fortunately, we had already made digital a primary initiative for the company, the digital transformation, and had begun the investments needed to do that. But I think this is made it very clear to everyone, our investors, our partners out in the community, that we need to accelerate the digital transformation, that it's a necessary part of doing business this year. We're anticipating school closures in the fall, certainly the need for partial school closures, and how do we serve our customers in that environment effectively? And it really all orients itself around digital experiences, digital delivery, digital solutions. So truly has accelerated our digital focus and increased our willingness to invest in digital to support that transformation. I also think that there'll be a permanent shift where some of these new ways of delivering are actually better than the old ways and they will continue. We have seen some pretty extraordinary uh, actions out there in the field that have been much better than in the past, and I'm sure they'll become the best practices for the future that we'll then test and optimize against. And one of the things I was so impressed as we were talking last week, you said, man, it was really hard when this pandemic first hit. We had to change the way we go to market, but what's been satisfying has been we're actually seeing some really nice revenue gains from all of this, and we think our business is stabilizing and actually growing right now because we've been able to use digital um, in a way that's much more effective than we have in the past. Is, is that the case? And if so, can you expound on that just a bit? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, initially in the crisis in the second half of March when we saw what the stock market was really dropping, businesses were re reacting hopefully quickly to the changing environment to manage the cost structure and, and get everything into line for what they needed for their businesses. But what we've seen is that in the April-May timeframe, there's actually been a nice rebound from that uh, precipitous drop that we're experiencing. And then the rapid enablement of digital delivery, the shift to marketing and selling using our e-commerce websites allowed us to have a nice rebound. And indeed, we're actually seeing year-over-year -year increases in some areas based on our delivery of d digital solutions for marketing and selling. How do you think kind of private equity has been reacting to this? Um, in particular, Platinum Equity, which is your equity sponsor, how, how have they been reacting to this crisis and how have they been supporting you? They've been tremendously helpful, actually, in providing us with access to the best advice from leading firms, uh, from their own internal operations team. They helped navigate and helped me personally understand uh, good frameworks for operating through the crisis. So they've been a great support. They've also been willing to provide the right support about quickly re-engaging on our Chief Digital Officer search because of the rapid understanding that digital is essential right now to the operations of the company, will be essential in the fall, likely will be essential next year, and the transformations that are occurring are going to stick. So they've been very supportive on the digital front as well. Uh, is there anything else about this environment or kind of your company today 
that you want to talk about in, in its relationship to the COVID crisis? One thing that's actually been really uh, positive is we were able to take our plants that manufacture graduation gowns and regalia and convert them into also manufacturing medical gowns and face masks. Wow. And wow. so we have been delivering uh, hundreds of thousands of gowns also in the last wow. few weeks and we're scaling that production up. Uh, we have converted, we put at the front of the line in our printing plants anything needed for health and wellness, certainly for the hospitals, but for the local communities. Uh, we've stepped up tremendously our support of the health and well-being of our own employees, of course. Uh, but that's been uh, something that I would never have expected to be in the <laughs> personal protective equipment business in uh, eight <laughs> weeks ago, but here we are in it and it's, it's surging in, in what it, it is and the, the benefits that it's providing.